Rewired Addiction, Derek Lambert. I want to talk to you guys about Suboxone. And, you know, you can use this same thing for like methadone or Subutex or something like that. I want to say up front, like I'm not against these drugs, okay? I'm not against people who do them or the idea of using them. I've done quite a few videos of my own experience with these drugs. I'm completely abstinent. I have over five years clean off heroin. I haven't touched alcohol in like seven years, six, seven years. And um, I'm happy that way. But what led me to do this, I realized for me, being completely abstinent was the best route for me. Now, I want to take you into what I know the doctors think, because I've interviewed the doctors before and talked to them about this. When you look as a doctor and you look at like the overwhelming evidence for people who relapse, for people who overdose using fentanyl and the street drugs, like so many STDs, so many deaths, so many crimes occur because of fentanyl, heroin, meth, cocaine, like you name it, the hard stuff's killing people and it's not good. Okay. So if you were thinking hard stuff's killing people, what do I do to alleviate those deaths, to alleviate that type of number? Well, did methadone help? Well, yeah. Overwhelmingly, methadone compared to fentanyl, street heroin, et cetera, et cetera, has a more success rate on people cleaning up their lives, going to get jobs, doing what they're supposed to do. And I, my brother-in-law, for example, I've recorded on my channel here. He has used methadone at one point for six years. Now, mind you, he relapsed when he tried to get off methadone to transfer to Suboxone. And during that transitional phase, being super connected with your doctor, very transparent, honest, and, and explaining what you're going through, what you're experiencing, and what's going on in your mind. It's so important. If you're even going to make a leap like that, that's a dangerous leap to make. Anyway, he had six years, relapsed, ended up on fentanyl, and I had to take him with me you know, down to Florida. We had him in a hotel room, detox and drying out. Literally miserable, absolutely miserable. Speaking of which, if you need help getting treatment, I have options and resources all over. Just message me, okay? Message me on Facebook, on the messenger. So I wanted to mention something. If you're a doctor and you're looking at people and you just don't know the commitment, dedication, and de deter determination that they have, and you're trying to save lives, what are you going to do? You're most likely going to put them on something that has a success rate that they can replace their habit with, with another habit like methadone, suboxone, uh, maybe the Vivitrol shot, maybe another chemical that might be coming out. Because let's face it, for me on Suboxone, I got back on track somewhat. I had a job. I was like functioning. It was a good tool for me. However, I told them right off the gate, I didn't always want to be on it. And they wanted me to at least try and get two or three years on it. Because during that amount of time, let's, let's just uh, consider that that time I was on hard drugs out on the street, living that lifestyle, started to ingrain in my, in my brain and change my patterns on how I think and how I act. But on the Suboxone, you know, I was able to go to work. I actually did things that were productive in life. I was doing somewhat the right thing. And I remember going through a transitional phase where I wasn't like, I just used Suboxone when I didn't want to withdraw fentanyl or my heroin. Um, at the same time, it's like the commitment in your mind to be on Suboxone is important. The person needs to be dedicated in doing that. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The doctor knows that the statistics are higher for success rate if you put them on methadone or suboxone or vivitrol, something like that, a chemical that can replace it. But I see it all the time and I experienced it myself. Like, let's be real. How are they going to get off? Like, is your doctor really working with a, a plan to down the road, make it to where you don't have to live using substances? I don't know if they ever have an escape route treatment option like they should. 
I mean, yes, let's save your life. Let's get you on something that's going to save your life. But what about getting you off at one point in your life? A lot of people go just, hey, it's better than what you were doing, right? I agree. I agree. And the fear I think doctors face is if we pull the plug on the Suboxone or the methadone outlet, their source of chemicals that keep them from going back to the streets, they're just going to go back to the streets. And that's a scary place to be. So if you're me trying to answer like, do I need a cold turkey? Do I need to stay off? Do I need to be abstinent? Or do I need to be on Suboxone or methadone? And you think like a doctor's thinking, well, no, they're thinking it'd be better for you to be on methadone or Suboxone the rest of your life than to catch hepatitis C, A, B, or AIDS, HIV, or possibly overdose and death. So no, it's better that you just stay on Suboxone and methadone. However, I'm not that guy who just thinks let's just stay on methadone or Suboxone the rest of our life. I think there's a lot of experiences we're numbing with those, those substances. When I was on it, it did numb my emotions. It did uh, lower my testosterone. It did make me not feel the full experience that I can experience in life. Also, I'm not going to lie and act like life was great since I've been abstinent for five years. There are times where I get depressed. There are times where I struggle, but I feel, I feel everything. And experiencing that is part of life and being human. So I, I'm really making this video for you guys to kind of like feel my emotions because I don't have an answer for this necessarily. I'm not the scientist or the doctor who has all the answers and the conclusions to this. I mean, if you were to say, which of the evils would you choose? I'd rather you choose a lesser evil, a methadone or suboxone type of uh, uh, tool. It is a tool, crutch, if you will, to lean on, to help you to survive and to make it and not have to ever die overdose or experience that because your life is more important than uh, a crutch tool, if you will, to help you make it. At the same time, I mean, like, do these doctors who are prescribing this have better solutions to getting you off down the road? Like, are they going to create better opportunities for people to come off these things? Or are they going to constantly act like, hey, no, 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 you just need to stay on it. And all the people I talk to, who say, no, my doctor acted really funny when I talked about getting off. I've been on it for three years and they acted really funny about that. No, there's only one doctor I've ever talked to, Dr. B and Fareed Baniman. And he's, and I'm sure there are others out there. I'm not trying to discredit doctors, but it's just very interesting that who's going to spend the time with you saying you have your life together. You have a great job. You've got your life with your wife and kids. Like you have things going for you now. And it appears that you're more stable in your life. He says the frontal lobal cortex and the midbrain are connecting. Like there's a connection, a neuro neurological connection now. You're making better decisions in life naturally. I think you might be ready. Ready for what? To somehow come off of the suboxone, the methadone, whatever it might be. And that process is scary. For me, if I were to go through that process and be on a substance like methadone or suboxone for a very long period of time, I would want to be in a comfortable environment. Usually someone who's been on it for that amount of time would probably have a job, which means they'd probably have decent insurance to be able to get into a decent location rather than a typical state funded location. That is when I would want to probably go to an inpatient somewhere where a doctor can help me, assist me comfortably, where I'm away from an environment where potentially I can relapse and go use and whatnot. And during that cocoon phase coming off, get to where I'm abstinent and then come at, into society where I'm more comfortable. Yes, there's going to be more stress because you're going to feel things like you haven't felt in a long time. Would it be better to be on Suboxone the rest of your life than die? Of course. Is that really the only options though? Like it's die or be on Suboxone? For some, maybe. I can't answer for you, but for me, it wasn't. I wanted to experience life. I'm five years and going. I'm not saying don't do it. And I'm not saying anyone who does these substances isn't clean either. I'm not that guy. I'm not the the abstinent guru and you must do it the way I did it type person. No, but I do think there needs to be better solutions for people who get on Suboxone and Subutex and methadone. That's a scary drug to, to withdraw, withdraw off of in and of itself. 
And a lot of people who've been on it that I talked to that are like 10, 15 years on Suboxone or Methadone, they're getting tired of it. They're tired of either spending the money on keeping this maintenance drug to keep going, or they're tired of how it's made them feel. They're kind of depressed. Their T is low. So now they probably got to go see a doctor about getting on a testosterone replacement therapy or something else. And, and that's a guy I'm speaking about. So I can only speak from a man's point of view on that, but I'm speaking for male and female. When I say they're kind of like sick of chasing and needing to lean on that, they want to be happy with their own mental faculty, their own physical body, waking up in the morning and having a cup of coffee like a normal person maybe, or maybe you don't drink caffeine. Maybe you you want to go for an exercise and drink water, but you don't need to have that crutch anymore. And they're ready to want to do that. Their doctors aren't actually trying to help them. That's why I think if you're going to do it, you can message me, you can message people about this, but definitely feel free to message me if you're ready to try and leap off something like that to get into an environment, into a, a rehab where you're you're in a safe place during that transition so you don't relapse and you can potentially come out and not need to be on it again. But I want to say this last thing in that vein. Let's say you want to leap and you start to get real nervous and you feel like a relapse is coming. Get back on it. Jump back on the Suboxone. Dr. B, Fareed Bonimod, that I've spoke to, good friend of mine, like he's right. Like relapse isn't worth it either. So make sure you know where you're at and, and be super transparent and, and just honest in where you're at and what you're doing to try and transition to an abstinent phase. If that isn't working and you feel like you're uncomfortable Okay, jump back on the medicine and do what you have to do to survive because that's number one. But I just don't think they have a great escape route. Many doctors don't really have uh, a good solution. They look at you sideways like, hold on, it's only been three years that you've been on Suboxone. And it's like, what? Three years and don't get me started on some of the controversial stuff going on right now and people that are getting on Suboxone. I'm telling you, um, yes, it can be bad. I have a guy that messaged me recently who never done opiates in his life, never did pills, never did heroin, who's addicted to, to Suboxone. And I'm like, not only addicted, but chemically addicted, right? Where he's on it. And I'm like, how did you start? What happened to you? What made you um, get involved in it? And he said, well, a family member told me to give him energy. So he started taking Suboxone because it started giving him energy. And now he can't get off. It's been three years. Dude, he's hooked on Suboxone and he never had an addiction to heroin, opiates, nothing like that. No opium, opiate, whatever. Opioid. That's wild. So I'm not here to bash any of this. It can be a tool for success for many people, but it can also be another, another uh, I guess you could say, fix that they get trapped in. And I didn't want to wake up anymore dependent on things, which is why I went abstinent. But if I ever had to do this again, I'd go to a treatment center and try to go through a comfortable route where doctors help medically assist me to get off the drug. Anyway, message me guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section of this video about methadone and Suboxone and whatnot. I just feel like there's not a great escape route and maybe our science will advance to a point where we can actually assist people who are trying to do this. Uh, Vivitrol is a really interesting one because it blocks the receptors, but it doesn't give you the high like a Suboxone does. I don't know. Give me your thoughts. I'm interested. I'm even open-minded to psychedelic stuff like Ibogaine and other psychedelic therapies where you're with a medical professional in the right setting where they might can assist you to experience and go through this where you don't end up uh, addicted to the drugs. You know, you can try and at least go that route. I I'm open-minded. I'm not closed off. I'm not old school. I'm not, you're abstinent or you're not clean. No, 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 no. I love you no matter what. I totally understand why you're doing what you're doing. And guess what? I don't care what anyone thinks. Survive. Survive. Because that's number one. Derek Lambert, Rewired Addiction. I love you guys. Tell me what you think. Like this video. Share this video. And don't forget, message me on Facebook if you need help.